Hey, what is going on? It is Monday. Happy Monday, April 11th, 2022. Okay. And yeah, it is cold today, but that's fine. It's still early in April, about um, over a third of April done already, but it's Monday. So, you know, got to balance, find some good stuff to balance that out. Um, yeah. And that's how we do it with a uh, coding problem. Okay. So welcome to coding with Jeff. Uh, if you like my videos, like, subscribe, uh, comment, uh, leave some feedback, let me know how I'm doing, etc. And um, yeah, let's get on with this coding problem. So I have an interesting problem today. Um, it's labeled as an easy. It's called uh, 1005 maximize sum of array after k negations. Um, again, it's really well liked on lead code. And uh, I think I know why, but let's try to figure that out together um <laughs> the statement says given an array nums and an integer k modify the array in the following way choose an index i and replace nums of i with num negative nums of i you should apply this process exactly k times you may choose the same index i multiple times return the largest possible sum of the array after modifying it in this way okay so basically Let's try to parse this, okay? Because that it it could be intuitive to you, but let's let's try to parse it anyway. Um, we have an array. Here's another example. The array is uh, of numbers four, two, three, right? Uh, and it's the number of negations that you need to perform is k equals one, okay? Um, and so that maximum sum that can be derived from this uh, array is five. Explanation, choose index one and nums becomes four, negative two, three. Seems easy, right? Okay. Now, here's the second example. Ah, we have negative numbers in this array. Okay. Issue number one, all right? So um, how do we solve this problem? Uh, three, we have the array three, negative one, zero, and two. We have three negations we can accomplish. So we choose indices one, two, and two, and nums becomes three, one, zero, and two. So did you see what happened there? We chose one, two, and then we again chose index two, right? So we had to take negative one, negate it once, and then negate it again, right? And then we uh, got the maximum sum, which is three plus one plus zero plus two, and that's six. So how did we know how to negate? The, how did we know that we had to repeatedly negate this multiple times? Okay, so that's we have to. This is this is where the problem starts to get a little tricky. And then the next array is nums of two, negative three, negative one, five, negative four, and k equals two. All right. So two negations available to us. So choose indices one and four. So index is one is <coughs> negative three, index is four is negative four. So choose one and negative three and negative four, and we get three and four, and then the sum is two plus three plus negative one plus five plus four, which is 13. Wow, now it's getting even trickier, okay? Right, we, now so take a look at, look at this for a second. What's the first thing that comes to mind? So we need to look at the contributions of numbers, right? Why did four, two, and three, why did we negate, choose index negative two? Because it was the smallest uh, index, right? The smallest valued index. So that makes sense, right? And so you might start to think that, oh, okay, well, now we should maybe start always uh, adding to the maximum sum by negating the smallest contributions first. And what's the easiest way to do that if we have n values? Well, the first thing we should do is sort, right? So I'm going to sort this array nums, OK? And let's just for good measure get a max sum value out there because we need to get this max sum value. OK. Now, one can conceivably think we're going to iterate through this array. Uh, I rest in nums.length. OK. Now, if we have, let's say that we're going, let's say, so what's the strategy that we're going to employ? So we have to think about the different types of inputs. OK, if we have all negative numbers, 
negative 4, negative 3, negative 1, 2, and 5. I'm going to take this last this input here, okay? I hope lead code, okay. Taking this last input here, all right? Well, here's the thing. So I've sorted this. Now, what we have to know is that, okay, I have two available, uh, two available, k equals two, and then I turn this positive, I turn this positive, and bam, right? Seems simple, right? But what if k was equal to three? No, k is equal to, let's say k is equal to four. And let's turn this equal to, uh, six, and let's turn this equal to seven. Okay, let's say k is equal to four, and let's turn these back. What would happen if I employed my previous strategy? <clears throat> so I'd go bam, 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 bam. Uh oh. Is this really the largest sum? Because the, the sum at this point would be 4 plus 3 plus 1 minus 6, right? So that would be that would be 2 plus 7, which would be 9, right? But is that really the largest sum? Because I'm going to go back to my previous state. <clears throat> what if I did, remember, we can repeatedly negate an element. So what if I did 4 plus 3, negative 1, and then I have 1 left. So should I turn 6 negative? Nope, I should stay on negative 1. Because then the sum becomes 6 plus 6, uh, 4 plus 3, which is 7, minus 1, which is 6, plus 6 is 12, plus 12 is 17, and 12, uh, 12 plus 7, sorry, which is 19, and 19 is far larger than the previous sum, what we had before, which was, I guess, nine, right? Right, because we don't, we didn't want to actually go through and negate six. So this is a boundary, right? Even worse, what if we had like 10 or 30, right? We, we're gonna have to, at these boundaries, you know, so we have to look at the types of boundaries we have. We have a negative slash positive boundary we have a array length boundary. We have zero as a boundary. Because remember, at zero, if we had a zero in here, and say this was negative, let's say k equals 400, OK? We can iterate. We can iterate. Let's start iterating. We could turn this po positive, 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 and then we can have the zero just repeatedly negate until there's nothing left, and then sum plus sum, and then we, that's how we'd get the maximum array. So zero would actually be a godsend in this case, but some the you know sometimes you don't have that, and the worst case is that you have this negative positive boundary. So we have to account for that. Okay, so these three boundaries have to be accounted for. So I'm gonna put something together. If, k is greater than 0, OK, right? <clears throat> if k is greater than 0, that means that we can perform negations. We still have the negations left. Nums i is greater than 0. I'm going to just put the skeleton for the different boundaries, right? If nums i equals 0, else if nums i less than 0. OK, so we have all these cases here. And then we have, finally, let's just make sure what happens at the end of the day. Um, we have to remember through each iteration, max sum <coughs> plus equals nums of i. OK, so we and then we want to return this max sum okay uh, so let's make sure we return this max sum appropriately return max sum okay 
And now, here's the tricky part. This is what I call, this is, this is why I say this is not an easy problem. If k2 equals 1 nums i equals negative nums i. Okay, k equals 0. So what am I saying here? If we're in a positive run, right, if we have numbers like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 after sorting, we just keep want to keep turning this negative over and over again until k is equal to 0, uh, or k is equal to 1 and we have no choice. And if we have no choice but to turn this negative, then we'll just have this because this is smaller than the next number because these are all positive anyway this will just we'll just turn this negative right and how do we tell <clears throat> whether we need to negate this number or not well we can just we know that k if it, if k is k mod 2 is equal to 1 right that means if it's an odd number of k's right then we have we can if a negative times a negative is a positive times a negative is a negative times a negative is a positive. So positive k's or uh, even k's would make us at least uh, oh, cyclically turn this, oh, get completely get rid of this negative number. But if we had one extra k left, if we had an odd k, we'd have to turn this negative. Okay, but that's okay because that's the smallest contribution. So this is the easy case. And then in this case, we always turn k equal to zero. Okay, now what if <clears throat> nums of i is zero, zero, and this would happen. Uh, we'd hit this case if we started with an array at zero. Then we just, easiest case, as I said, beautiful. We turn k to zero because we can just, no matter whether we have odd or even k's, we can just repeatedly negate until, because uh, negative zero equals zero. Okay, so we'll repeatedly negate, and every subsequent element will not suffer. Now, what if nums of i less than zero? This is where the fun happens, and I've said that a few times already, equals nums length minus one. Okay, so nums of, there are many subconditions in this array that we have to take into account. Okay, and because, because the negative case is so complex compared to the other places, relatively speaking, right? Obviously not in the quantum mechanical sense, but still relative to what we've seen so far, we're going to have to um, really be careful with this condition. Okay, and what do I mean? Okay, so what are the conditions here? If we're in an array boundary, like say we had a run of negative numbers, negative two, negative one, three, negative four. We've gotten all the way to the end of, or whatever, negative one, yeah, negative three, negative two, negative one. We've gotten all the way to the end of the array and all we have is negative numbers. In that case, we're going to have to um, uh, essentially, we're gonna have to treat this in a special way because we essentially will only will treat this as in we'll look at the parity of k whether it's odd or even again kind of similar to the positive case and we'll negate um, the number based on its parity okay um, and k equals zero again we can treat this similar to the even case because we can't move any farther, so we'll only negate this smallest number if necessary, right? And it has the smallest contribution because we've already turned this and this positive, so we'll just keep um, cyclically reducing k until we have no choice but to negate it or turn it positive, right? Now, next, uh, we have to look at if nums of i is equal to zero. Now again, here's here's to me the most complex condition. Okay. Subcondition in subcondition in subcondition. You'll see I'm writing this down and I'll explain my thinking in a second. Mm. 
Nam is I. Okay. Okay, so. Now, what am I doing here? Okay, this is in the case where we have the negative positive boundary. If, um, if Matt, and it'll make sense in a second, I believe, but I still have to write it down. Here's the nested sub, third level of nested subcondition. By the way, would you believe this is a still a linear time array? Okay. Okay, let me write it all down first and then I will explain. Okay. If k on 2 equal, you're probably at this point like, what is going on here? Nums i equal negative nums i. k equals 0. Okay, now what in tarnation is happening in here? Okay. Okay, now this takes some explaining. <sighs> okay, we are, if we are at a, if we are at a negative positive boundary. Okay, so like for example, if we are at negative three and then five, there are two versions of this boundary. You have like, you can have one that's like negative three, and one, negative three, and five, and four, or five, six, whatever, and negative three, and zero. And what's the difference between all these three? Okay, well, in one boundary condition, we have the absolute value of one of the numbers, of, of the left number is larger than the, in, than the next number. And if that's the case, then if the absolute value of the negative number is larger than the positive number, so that's in this situation, then we definitely want to make sure that negative number is not what uh, remains and the next non positive number, if there are any k left, right, if k is greater than zero, we want to make sure that positive number <coughs> becomes negative. If, if it's the other way around, if the absolute value, if you're in this situation here, or this situation here, negative 3 is less than, uh, the absolute value of negative 3 is less than 6, then we m for sure don't want to make sure that 6 doesn't become negative, and we want negative 3 to absorb all the negativity. So that's what's in this situation. <clears throat> if k mod 2 is equal to 1, k is equal to 0, otherwise k is equal to 1, and then we negate the value we negate this neg we negate this negative number uh, and make it positive and in this case the next positive number k it will be remaining will be one because we cyclic ne negate k right remember k is we reduce k from like 30 50 90 all the way down to one by repeatedly cyclically re uh, multiplying the k the value the i value over and over again. <coughs> And in the second case, which represents this case, if the absolute value is less than or equal to, right, and because these two are essentially going to fall under the same condition, then we say that um, this negative number, you know, will become negative, can become positive, but we have to ensure that there's no way that the next number is going to become, is going to have any negativity associated with it. So we have to take the zero out of k. Okay, so um, that's that condition. It's, it's a pretty complex condition, so you might have to sit and think about it. But then, luckily, that's where most of the thinking ends because the next condition is simply if we're just in a stretch of negative numbers. Negative 5, negative 2, negative 1. We will just, and again, negative 1 duplicate. You could, this will matter, also apply for duplicates. You can just repeatedly negate and just move k along. And this is the simplest condition because k does not cyclically need to do any kind of work here. It'll just repeatedly move along from left to right. So let's run this and see what happens after all this time. Okay, accept it and run it. Bam, accept it. Wow. Okay. Now, 
if there may be an easier way to do this, but I'm going to tell you right now, uh, you have to intuit your way through these. You can't just look at a solution and be like, oh, that's the best way to do it. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and click on the link below. I write all this code before, um, as you can see, and uh, this is all my code. <laughs> you know, I reason through these videos, and I try to put the explanations as best as I can using my words. So again, if you like this video, like, subscribe, click on the link below, and I'll see you again another time. Bye.